Hello, welcome to Grill the Gaffer. I am with Steve Evans, the Mansfield Town Manager, where he will answer, hopefully, very, very in-depthly, your tweets about your managerial experience. The first one, Steve, is from Pete Dorman. What do you do with a player that thinks they're too good for the team? Oh, take him to get a job at Sainsbury's or Tesco <laughs> or Waitrose or any other... No. Um, I think you get them in the office and you have a little chat with them and you, you bring them on side with the group and you, you try all of that if he's that good and ultimately if it don't Does work... That, is that the key phrase? If he's that good, do you, do you tailor well, it accordingly? I think you try to. Mm. I think but you, the, the important in the sacramental place is the dressing room mm. and that has to be as one. So you, you have to also work hard with your other players to perhaps say... You know, if we get this boy on side, then he could mm. win his matches or he could save his matches, whatever position he plays. Mm. And this next one from Rhys David, it, it's, it's been a very long and varied journey that you've been on in your managerial career, but just how did you get into management? Um, more by good fortune rather mm. than anything else. I was, uh, I was working for, for a national brewer in a very successful career mm -hmm. and a next-door neighbour of mine was a chairman of a local club and mm. sacked his manager. <laughs> And, uh, and you have my football background, so just said, let's literally come and take a couple of sessions for us uh -huh. and help me out. And um, we get carried away. You win a game and he asks you to take another game. And, uh -huh. and within two or three months, you, the bug is back in your system. And, but in between times, I was doing a, a little bit of work for Martin and Neil at Celtic, watching uh -huh. certain players in England and in Europe. So, so all good, really. Did you feel that, that keeping your toe dipped in at that stage helped you when you got back into it? Yeah, massively. I was, I was aware of players across the levels for, uh -huh. for the work I was doing. That must be key, being for... able to know who can fit into what positions in a club where, as and where it's needed. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, it doesn't matter whether you're, you're going and looking at, at players in the, in the football league at that time as I was to move north. But um, it was an opportunity to, to go and watch a lot of talent. Some of the Celtic identification at that time was mm -hmm. looking at non-league. Mm -hmm. So I was well aware of what I was getting into. Mm -hmm. The next one is from Ollie Hansford. And... I'll mention what, what this makes me think of when I've asked you this question. One of our players hasn't scored a single goal this season. As the gaffer, what action shall I take? I remember speaking to you in the tunnel at Ellen Road about Chris Wood needing confidence, needing a run of games, a run of goals. Look where he is now. Just what, how, what did you do to Chris that perhaps Ollie Hansford could do to his, one of his players? Well, Chris done it for himself. Mm. And, and there's a lot of people behind Chris who, who can take a little bit of the credit. Myself being a head coach in one and the likes of James Beattie and Gary Monk who, mm -hmm. who followed myself. But we just spoke to, to Woody who been a little bit fitter, a little bit sharper, mm -hmm. living a little bit better. And, uh, and to be fair to the kid, he, he had to go and do all those things. Mm -hmm. And he did. And, and the goals came. And mm -hmm. we always said with his height, his strength, his ability and his, his asset of being able to score a goal mm. would lead him on to, um, to the Premier League and he's, we hoped we'll lead, but he's got his move to Burnley. Is it about addressing fundamentals? Is that basically make the player good at the basics and then that real ability comes shining through? Yeah, I think so. You'll never teach a goal scorer where to move in the box and you never teach a You think that's instinctive, do you? Well, I think it's instinctive. Yeah. I think if you look at the, the strikers all the way across, I think they have to work hard at it. They have uh -huh. to do the training drills and the, the more importantly, Chris, you know, he came to Leeds and I think he went off the rails a little bit and didn't mm. perhaps didn't equip himself properly to how good he was. He's, he's the best finisher I've ever worked with on a consistent basis. Mm -hmm. Uh, him and the boy that's just gone to Hull from Wolves, Noah Dicko, mm -hmm. had him for a short spell on loan and they two stood out like a... Like a uh, like a light in a dark ocean, really. Mm -hmm. Right, the last one, JH FIFA. How do I deal with this lad in brackets five foot seven who keeps doing skills on the wing, and how do you make him realise he isn't Neymar and his name is Dan? <laughs> well, um, if you, if you were being serious about it and he had that much ability, we I played with one of the best, and you might remember him, David. You're not you're not old enough, but there's a boy called Pat Nevin. I played he was with many years ago. <laughs> and, and you couldn't get the ball off him. Uh -huh. But there was a criticism, perhaps Pat's early career, that mm. he tried to do too much. And Craig Brown, who's, who's on the board at Aberdeen now, but of course the previous Scotland manager, introduced in our training schedules where Pat had to take maximum of two touches, mm -hmm. even in all in-game practice matches. Mm. And, uh, and look at the career Pat went on to have. Mm -hmm. he, he was a genius. Mm -hmm. Steve, thank you very, very much for your time. Thank you.